Hello, welcome to all the viewers. I feel privileged to welcome all those who have come across this video in their quest to find about the MEP660, namely microprocessor based locomotive control system of diesel locomotives in the Indian Railways. Indian Railways is a link for the whole of the nation, connecting various parts and people all across the landscape. This Indian Railways generally runs on two kinds of locomotives, one being the diesel locomotive, the other being the electric one. We, being members of the mechanical department, are here presenting a video about the MEP660 in the diesel alco locomotive. As we shall move further in the video, we shall find about a very important diesel locomotive electrical component, namely the MEP. This component is not manufactured anywhere in Indian Railways but is on an annual contract to a Hyderabad based company named Medha. Most of the material presented here has been obtained by people in the diesel POS shop of Jamalpur and by interaction with the Medha team which operates in the diesel shed of Jamalpur workshop. We are the members of 2014 SCRA VAC. On the camera presently is Karveshwar of the and this is Prithvi Shankar of the CRA 2014 batch. Today we are taking you to this journey where we will discuss about the microelectronic processor and the microcontrol based governor system of an Alco locomotive. And as we progress further into the Jamalpur diesel shed, here we are on our way to the Medha office which is an office controlled by a private company named Medha, a Hyderabad based firm controlling the microelectronic processor and the MCBG contracts for Indian Railways. Complete work for the installation, repair and if needed the changement, changing of the MEP and the MCBG is done by this company. Here we are going further into the Jamalpur diesel shed. As you can see different areas that's the locomotive kept this is a modern type of electric locomotive but we shall not discuss about this this is as you can see is a motive a diesel alco locomotive that is being shut and we are almost on our way and we reached it this is the Medha office as you can see on the left of your screen, it shows the MEP display unit. This is the MEP display unit. The MEP system is a microprocessor based system in which it provides a superior control mechanism, protection to the traction equipment, fault diagnostics and adaptability to different engine types. This system it controls the entire locomotive. There are four sub-control systems in this, as I mentioned on the right engine and local propulsion, auxiliary generator and battery charging, excitation and last wheel slip control. The MEP660 control system displays various operating parameters on the display unit as we will see further, continuously from the selected predefined group for the benefit of the driver and the maintenance staff. Now we come to the sub-assemblies of the MEP. As you see, all the functions that we'll further see in the video done by the microprocessor-based locomotive control system, the MEP660, is designed with a number of sub-assemblies for the ease of maintenance and reducing the amount of calibering required. The microprocessor-based consists of many different types of assemblies, namely 80. Here, as we have shown, we are showing some of the uh, most important kind of uh, the sub assemblies, the VCT magnet valve, which we shall discuss ahead. On the right, you can see this is the RS232 cable. This is used to connect the MEP device to a PC uh, via a software which is specially made by Medha to get all the information that will be stored in the MEP, as we'll see further. We have reached the stage in this video. We will discuss about the various features and advantage of an MEP, making it a most useful electrical component in the diesel alco locomotive. 
If you follow my highlighter, I shall explain each and every point I've mentioned in a little detail. First, we'll start with the adaptability. The same control system can be adaptable to various class of diesel electric locomotives. Then there is the optimum utilization of power. The MEP continuously monitors the site altitude, ambient temperature. Necessary uh, corrections are made to the horsepower to calculate the site horsepower reference horsepower which ensures that the engine is optimally loaded. In addition to monitoring the locomotive equipment, the MEP660 system keeps on monitoring its own modules and sensors as we can see from this feature of self-diagnostic for its own healthiness. In case of any failure, appropriate action is taken and the fault is registered. Automatic fault recovery is as I said earlier. For most of the faults, the recovery conditions are identified and whenever the fault ceases to exist, the fault recovery is recognized and displayed to the driver on the display unit. Another important fact is it has a low maintenance cost and it has a smart control over wheel slip. This I shall explain a little in deep. It means that the MEP660 provides a superior wheel slip control which improves the addition substantially. The speed center sensors which are mounted on the traction motor and shield measure all the six traction motor RPMs. If in any case one or more wheels are tending to slip, the amount of slip is precisely calculated and the excitation is controlled through a proportional and integral control loop in a way to control the wheel slip. This is done by the MEP. In the midst of the other features for the MEP comes the self load box test. It is a test used to get the engine performed. During this test, the dynamic brake grids are connected to a resistive load to an alternator. Engine can be loaded up to 90%. No external load connections and metering are required. To conduct this test, simply select the self load test option from the test mode. Next comes the most important feature of MEP, which is the event recorder. The events are recorded in the MEP in the external memory card. The memory is divided into three categories, short term, long term and configuration. These uh, store up, up to uh, 50 hours of data as I've already mentioned on the right. And some parameters are also mentioned like the date, the time, the local speed, train brake pressure, T limit. There are many more like the status of penalty brake application, status of headlight, which can also be stored in the MEP. Along with that, another last and most important feature is the T limit, the tractive effort limiting feature. This is done by a T limit switch on the panel. The switch has two positions and normally it is kept in the normal position. The driver can simply toggle the switch whenever he wants to regulate the tractive effort. If not required, the driver can simply toggle the T limit switch to normal position. The system automatically develops full power. After the features, we come to the display unit. The display unit is the main interface between the user and the equipment. Normally, a group of parameters are displayed in real time on this display unit. Different group of such parameters are available for selection. Users can select any one of the groups for display and record the required locomotive parameters while testing the locomotive. The keyboard on the display has 24 keys. These keys are used for menu navigation, menu selection and data entry. These are the context keys, the navigation keys, the alphanumeric keys and the selection keys. Among the selection keys, the right side of this key is known as the main menu key and the left key is known as the cream menu. Uh, the top key over these two keys is known as the bright key and the dim key. Pressing these two keys, the brightness of the display can be adjusted. Now, I shall explain to you what does the display menu look like. The main menu is accessed by pressing the main menu key on the keyboard. All the display options pertaining to the local maintenance are under this. There are two pages. The page 1 by 2 of it shows the different features available on this page. They are namely the faults, the display, the maintenance mode and the TM cutout. To change to the page 2, we have to press the button F2. When we do so, 
we get four other options on this page they are local operation collective data settings and the systems information on the screen pressing f1 key brings you back to this page where you get these four options and pressing the f4 key the screen goes to default screen to select any sub option on the screen place the cursor against the required option using the up and arrow keys and then press enter or the f3 key as i had shown in the previous slide immediately the menu screen changes to the sub menu of the option selected the next option under the main menu is display the display sub menu can be selected from the screen one by two of the main menu press the down key once followed by the f3 key to get through you have different operating modes under this if you follow me these are the excitation mode the auxiliary mode the wheel clip mode the driver mode which tells about the various parameters such as the engine rpm tf volt the traction motor field amperes the gross hp etc then we have the mcbg status the digital inputs the hp status that is the horse pass and lastly but not the least the ccd status when the locomotive is equipped with computerized control brake system the parameters are collected and displayed in the msp for the user interface these are the different uh, like we can see the labels and the parameters which control the ccd as you can see in this table here another option under the main menu is the maintenance mode this option is used to make different tests uh, for load box, relays, input, output, etc. The maintenance mode option can be selected from the main menu by pressing the arrow key until the option is selected and then pressing the entry, enter key or simply key number 3. Some of these tests, as I have mentioned, are the load box test, uh, which is conducted uh, to see the, uh, what is the engine performance actually. Then there is the meters test. In this uh, option, we test the load meter functionality and to identify error in the analog meters that are driven by the MEP 660. Then there is the PWM test, which is the pulse width modulator test. <coughs> After that, we have the radiator fan test. This test is to ensure the operation of R1 and R2 contractors, radiator fan, and its circuitry in the locomotive. There are two tests under this one is the radiator fan at low speed and the radiator fan at high speed we have the transition test ab test and the air brake test the map is made up of different type of control cards there i have mentioned many kind of control cards we shall see one of of each in detail the first is the control card mau which is the second control card having a microcontroller along with the program software. This card controls the auxiliary generator field current to regulate the terminal voltage. Then we have the control card MWS, which is the third control having a microcontroller along with its program software. This card detects the wheel slip and communicates it to the MEPCC card. We have the digital input cards, the digital output cards, and log input cards current sensors, voltage sensors, speed sensors, we also have pressure sensors and temperature sensors here. As I head towards the end of this video, it shall not be right if I do not discuss about the VCD. The VCD or the vigilance control device and the magic work of the VCD. The VCD is a button or a system that has been installed under the MEP in which we ensure that the local pilot or the driver does not doze off to sleep during his work hours of operation. For this, this system has to be reinstated once it gives signals by pressing the button. This cannot be done by the even the co-loco pilot, it has to be done by the main loco pilot. For that, sometimes, so that the VCD does not assume that the driver is in sleep, the driver or the local pilot continuously needs to change some parameter even if it's speed braking some other kind of horn or something to ensure that he is active and not gone to sleep this is the power of the vcd button hopefully in this short video i have been able to complete my task of imparting a little bit of knowledge about the mep 660 which i got during my apprenticeship period of special class a pre-apprentice. Let me introduce you to myself. 
I am Prithvish Haldar, a student of the Special Class Railway Apprentice Batch of 2014. That's all folks that all was I could give to you in such a short period of time. Thank you for your patience and for watching this video and please put on your comments to tell me where I can improve in my next videos. Thank you.